First question is from official Bruce Love. I recently came upon a post where a trainer said you should never go ass to grass on squats or even 90 degrees and that it has no benefit physically or aesthetically. What are your thoughts on this claim? Oh, he's talking yeah. about that one knucklehead. Is he? Yeah, he has to be talking about I that. I love one. absolutes, right? Yeah. Isn't that great? Okay, no. so here, so this is flat out, here's the truth, okay? Uh, your If you have good mobility, stability, and control, then a larger range of motion with those things, those prerequisites, prerequisites, right? A larger range of motion, this has been proven time and time again, builds more muscle, and it builds more total strength. Fact. Done. Okay, yeah. so who should not squat ass to grass? Who should who should not squat past ninety degrees? The person who lacks the stability and control to do so. Right. That's the person that should not do that. Or, so, or somebody training sports specific. That's the other. Oh, sure. That's the other. There's the other. Sure, sure. There's two. There's two people that you see. And then, Good point. And and those are the people that you should see not squatting deeper than ninety degrees. Either one, like you said, like if it's a specific application to sports. Yeah, right? a basketball yeah. player. A basketball yeah. player training quarter squats makes a lot of sense because when he springs up to dunk the mm -hmm. basketball, he doesn't go past ninety degrees in his squat to shoot up above. No. So he wants to be. It's a very specific. It's all on how you generate power, and in that sport, it's not all the way down. You know, below ninety degrees. Right. right so right. so for. for for specific application like that, that makes sense. Or if somebody is, ha, is has limited range of motion due to either injury or poor mobility, and they can't go beyond that without their form breaking down tremendously, then absolutely they shouldn't. But that person who you know absolutely shouldn't should work towards that. Yes, by working on mobility and addressing the reason why they can't go ninety. The yeah. joint, your joints were designed to do that. Right. If you've ever done this, some pe a lot of people have experienced this. I did with uh, bicep training. I did it with back training. Where, as a kid, you know, working out, you know, you're, you're there, there's a lot of ego, especially as a young male. Right. There's a lot of ego surrounding your lifts, mm -hmm. and so rather than doing uh, I'll give you a, a silly one, right? Rather than doing like full extension preacher curls, which is a silly exercise, right? But without, I used to stop just short of full extension because I could handle way more weight. And, you know, when you're 16, 17 years old, that's all that matters. And so that's how I did curls. Well, when I was 18 years old or so, I remember talking to uh, a, a fellow trainer because I first became a trainer. He had amazing arms and he told me, no, nah, bro, go all the way down, go lighter. Don't worry about how much weight you use. Go all the way down and watch what happens. And I added like a half an inch to my arms from going just a little bit deeper. I noticed this with my shoulders, noticed this with my back. So if you can't do a full squat because of lack of mobility, don't force yourself to do the full squat, but definitely work on mobility so that you can. This is why uh, our program, like MAPS Prime Pro, for example, this is why a lot of people are finding a lot of value in it. It's, it's Yes, it does prevent injury makes things feel better. But the people who are using it consistently, here's what I'm getting from them. I followed your program, Maps Prime Pro. I did it diligently. Now my squat is below 90 degrees and I can do it with good mobility. And now I've actually built more muscle. My legs look better. My glutes look better because I can I can maximize the potential of this exercise because of better mobility. Oh, I'm well, getting I'm getting that, or I'm getting people saying that there's no bursitis in their hips, like I yes. I was suffering for, or people that were that didn't squat because they had low back issues, and it was all related to the hip complex. Now right. they're doing that, so their back doesn't hurt when they squat. That's why, yeah, that's why this message always irritates me because it's it it's the easier way to cater to what the client wants to hear. You know, like they're they're just catering to, well, you can make gains and you don't have to struggle and go, you know, really work on your mobility and try and like press yourself to be better and, and, and see if you can, you know, gain more access and ability that your body, uh, you know, has. Like, it, like you're not going to unlock all the potential you potentially could, you know, achieve by by going through this this laborious process of like, trying to gain mobility. And you have to do this by doing the arduous types of exercise like the mobility drills and all these things like people don't want to do that so let's not talk about that you yeah, know yeah. let's just give you the uh you could just go 90 you can get some good gains from this and but now you're like limiting your abilities you're you're you know long term you're setting yourself up for restriction in movement which then you know causes pain and arthritis and all that so th this can just jump off a cliff <laughs> a, compl <laughs> a complete transparency this was me Early on in my career, this is how all of us learned early on. Yeah, early on, uh, when we when I got my first few certifications, um, all of them. In fact, 
trying to remember the first certification that actually even, you know what it was? It was Nesta was the first one. To, and I remember it caused all kinds of shit amongst my trainers and us. It was the Nesta was the first certification that uh, I took that actually advocated for astagrass squatting and working towards that. All the certifications before that that I had, uh, NCSF, NASM, IFPA. Uh, what else did I have? Bro, they didn't even recommend bench pressing to, down to your yeah, chest. They they all I know. they all you in the elbows. Yes, they they, they done, all recommended dead. down yeah. to ninety degrees. And I un now later on in my career, it's all come full circle for me, and I, I understand why as a certification that is teaching trainers that are going to teach millions of people while they did it. It's a safety precaution. Yeah, they can if, standardize it that way. That's right. If we can if we can standardize it and we know that you know ninety nine pro percent of the population should be able to at least get down to ninety degrees safely. And at least bring their the bench press bar down to ninety degrees safely without injuring their shoulder. This is how we're going to teach our coaches because it's safer, safer, you know, for the masses. But the reality is, it's not better for the masses. Right. What's better for the masses is for them to recognize that, hey, I don't have good form past ninety degrees because mm. there's a breakdown and I have deficiencies because I've lost good range of motion in the, my joints that should have that range of motion. And so let's work towards that. And here's the thing. What I didn't know as a young trainer was I was doing more harm than good by shortening everybody's range up for safety reasons because what all you end up doing is tightening them up more and building more muscle and you for sure lose that range of motion that you would like to gain with them. And what that ends up doing is the body overcompensates when you move and you end up causing chronic pain in other places. Now you are now you get the bursitis in the hips. Now you get the low back pain. Mm -hmm. Now you get the neck pain going on. Now you got the nagging shoulder stuff because you never addressed – the mobility here, here. Okay, here's a uh, the truth, and it's uh, so for some people. I'm sure it's going to be controversial. Okay, there really are no inherently dangerous exercises. Now, exercises come with risk potential. Some exercises have a higher mm -hmm. risk potential and because there are prerequisites. Beca right, because they require more skill. Yeah. They require more control. They require better, greater mobility. But there are no real inherently dangerous traditional resistance training exercises what makes them dangerous is your your inability to do them properly what makes them dangerous is your lack of control stability mobility but if you do an exercise and i really don't care what it is i don't care i don't care what exercise it is pick the the craziest looking exercise that that actually exists don't just make something up but mm. pick the craziest looking exercise if an individual can the julie michaels peek through the window kettlebell swing. yeah now if you if if an extra if a person can do the movement with good control good mobility, good stability, that exercise is safe. So this goes for all of them, not just ass-to-grass squats.